Okay, welcome everybody to Animation Dingle. Um, if you've been tuning in already to Peter Lord, um, I'm sure you were kind of greatly impressed with 45 years of animation. I think the guy's a legend. You have to hand it to him for having a pint of Guinness at half nine in the morning. Thank you, Peter. You've set the day up well. We're back and this is Making the Frame Work. Now, that's a great title. Um, it dawned on me that a frame is a very interesting object. A frame has got to be firm and secure. It's a place that artwork with a piece of glass, probably a backing, rope it and display it on a wall. That's a very important job indeed for the frame. So the frame work scheme is a very solid idea. And it has to be because to be fair, it's been with us now for quite some time. And we're gonna to go to Emma shortly to tell us a little bit about the scheme to begin with. But I'm also going to just let people know that on the right hand side, up at the top there, there's ask a question. So that's where you ask a question. And at the end, we're going to allow some time to um, ask some of those questions. And then there's the chat beside that. So um, with me today, I've got Cahal Gaffney from Brown Bag Films, Alan Shannon from Jam Media, Neve Harrisy from Pink Kong, Emma, um, from uh, Screen Skills, or, I was going to say Screen Skills Ireland, I'm sorry, Emma um, uh, from Screen Ireland, Total Blunder, and uh, Ashton Conroy from um, and Maps and Plans, uh, currently a multi-disciplinary uh, artist. So can I just begin with each of you, maybe Carl, begin please, and uh, just give an introduction about yourself and uh, what you do in Brown Bag Films. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Morris. Uh, I'm Cahill uh, Gaffney. I co-founded Brown Bag Films all of 27 years ago. Um, time certainly flies. And uh, I started off as a, an animation director, kind of moved into producer and then kind of ran the studio. And in 2015, we sold a business to Nine Story Media Group and I took on the group COO role. So we've over a thousand people in five, four different countries uh, working away on multiple multiple projects at any given time brilliant and ashling uh yep um i'm ashling conroy um i'm the writer and director of the short film bardo which you'll see a clip of in a few minutes um so bardo is currently in production with the animation studio and maps and plans and is produced by claire lennon um, the film is my first frameworks um, and it's funded by Screen Ireland and RTE's frameworks initiative. Um, so we're still in production, but we're due to deliver in May. Um, so I suppose my background is uh, animation first, then fine art, then animation again. So I've come full circle. Um, and then I also work with Animation Ireland as well. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Very good, busy. Um, Neve. Hi guys, uh, this is Neve Herity here and I am the co-founder of an animation studio in Dublin called Pink Kong Studios. We set the studio up seven years ago um, and are doing numerous different types of productions from TV series to short films to virtual reality films to commercial work. Um, and we have had the privilege of doing two frameworks uh, one was our, our our first one was departure and that was within the first year and a half I think of setting up the studio um, which was amazing and then the second <coughs> one we delivered last year uh, which is called the dead hands of Dublin and can I just give a little shout out to to our crew because we did uh, win a shark award this morning and uh, so in the absence of any of any award ceremonies at the moment. Uh, big thanks to the crew and to Leo Crowley, um, who's the director, and thank you to Screen Ireland, uh, Emma, and RT as well. Brilliant. Um, Alan Shannon. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alan Shannon, um, and I am the Chief Creative Officer in Jam Media. So we've got two studios, one in Dublin, the main studio, and then Belfast is the main production studio. Um, so we've about 
fluctuates uh, in terms of numbers, but we have about a hundred people at the moment. Um, and we work, we create our own kind of IP generally, and we try to try to dream up ideas and get them on screen. So we've yet yeah, we we work across live action and animate mainly animation, and we try and kind of mix it up with lots of hybrid stuff. We've got a, a number of series under our belt now. And um, we're currently working on a live action show with CBBC called Nova Jones, which kind of, uh, it's basically, um, the tagline is Lady Gaga in space. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, so um, yeah, so we're, we're it's, it's, it's uh, an interesting show and there's lots of VFX and animation, in it, but uh, yeah, primarily uh, live action. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're currently doing. And I've got a long history with Frameworks, way back to 98, with Cahill, we made uh, The Last Elk. And then we'd uh, escape badly drawn Roy, the Worman, and uh, Fear of Flying, we've connected to as well. So, so uh, Frameworks has been very good to us. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma, Emma Scott, um, Emma, apologies for my, my earlier mention. Um, tell us a bit about yourself, Emma. Uh, well, um, my name's Emma Scott. I'm the production and distribution manager at Screen Ireland. Um, well done, Neve. I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so nice to hear you all talk about the frameworks, actually. It, it seems to be just woven into the culture of, of the animation sector here. And it's great to see, you know, all the different stages that you're all at. Um, Carl has been there uh, and Alan a long time and Ashin just just coming in the door on them and Neve somewhere in the middle, yeah. I guess. Um, but we're so proud of the scheme in Screen Ireland, you know, um, we've been running it for an astonishing, and I had to look this up, 26 years. Um, and it's been through a few different uh, partners. Um, we had the Arts Council of both Ireland and Northern Ireland at one point. But really, its long-standing partner continues to be our national broadcaster, RTE. And uh, for years now, I've been working alongside Pauline McNamara, you'd all know well, I'm sure, from RTE on the scheme. Um, their partnership ensures a broadcast of the finished films on our national channel, which is great. So we always know that they're going to get out to, to the Irish audiences that way, alongside all the international work we do with promoting them. And just briefly, I mean, looking back over the scheme, my colleague Jill, who looks after the applications, tells me we've had over 700 applications over the years into Frameworks. And we make on average about four finished films a year. Um, I mean, the films have reached out across the world to audiences everywhere. And, um, you know, they've really succeeded on so many different stages globally, including winning awards all over the place, like me this morning. Uh, but, you know, all over the place at A-list festivals and obviously even getting as far as the Oscars, which uh, one of our panel members might know all about. So we're really proud of their achievements. That's great. And uh, thanks for giving us a, a sense of the history, because uh, I was going to ask you about that. It's, it, it's good to kind of lay the groundwork for all that time. I can't believe it's 700 applications. That's incredible, yeah. And for you, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, um, we're going to begin with that film that, you know, Oscar nominated that you mentioned. What won one of his Oscar nominated films, Carl Gaffney, Give Up Your Old Sins. He was saying how much he still loves this film, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying I can't but, watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm going to... This is, I, want you, I want you to kind of give us a sense here, and I'll just, I'm going to line it up for you, like of how important exactly, you know, the short was at the point in your career. And I just want to say, like, according to your brilliantly choreographed history on your website, this is, this is excellent. In 2000, you, quote, avoided being annihilated, annihilated by the millennium bug, and you continued to produce high quality commercials for a growing number of clients. And then in 2001, give up your old sins. 2002, you've got your first Oscar nomination for Give Up Your Old Sins. And that series goes on to become the highest ever selling DVD in Ireland. And then in 2003, things seem to turn around. There's like the struggling young guys all of a sudden are in a new building. So maybe just line all this up for us as to how important that scheme was at that time and making Give Up Your Old Sins. Yeah, well, we were quite a small company back then, and we were doing a lot of TV commercials and CD-ROMs and anything that would pay the bills and, and to, to keep keep the door open. Um, so, you know, making that short film was really to kind of, uh, for showreel to, to get more TV commercial work, which was, um, which was ironic. But um, 
it was it was pivotal. It certainly opened up the door for us, you know, internationally. That that whole kind of gave you that confidence of getting into to meet anybody with, with, with your Oscar nomination. But the truth of it was, it, it's like winning the lotto with no cash. And um, everybody mm. assumes you're loaded, and you're yeah. not. You're still a small little struggling company. But so it just takes time and a business plan and commitment and perseverance and all all of those things to really kind of turn it around. But it, it helped us get into the bigger broadcasters then. And, and But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't until 2005 that we actually did our first long-form TV series, which was a good three, three or four years afterwards, you know. Um, but certainly, look, the thing about Give Up Your Own Sins was that it launched careers. And, and like Alan, who's on the panel, was pivotal to its success. Like he, he animated and did so much to it, you know. But it was... It was um, so many people like started on on give up your old sins and if you look at the credits on that and the tv series most of the people have gone and set up their own studios now you know so uh mm -hmm. it's it's um you know it's it's it, it was great fun but as, as i said i can't watch it anymore <laughs> i'll play it um shortly um but i, I while neve was gonna line up departure and what it was like for her to um um receive the funding for departure i mean it's, it's sometime later i think it was like 2016, is that right? Or was it 2018, 2018? Uh, 2016, no, it was 2017 that we received the funding. Yes, yeah, so it yeah. came out in 2018. Yeah. So tell us your story, Neve, while I um, have a look at the, the clips here. Thank you. Yeah, so our studio was set up in 2016. Um, and I guess, I mean, it was really one of the first big things at, at that point in time that we went for funding for um uh, you know we had been we had been doing some corporate videos and just really you know whatever we could get in to to um keep the keep the lights on and have people paid and, and trying trying to to build up a studio and and we decided to put in for frameworks um and it, at the time it was quite you know it was quite scary and daunting the the studio was really only only open um so Aoife Doyle, who's the co-founder um, and director of, of Departure uh, we, we, uh, and, and the writer, uh, we put the application together and put it in and, and just kind of prayed to all the gods uh, up there, all the animation gods that, that we'd uh, get selected. And, and we were delighted to, to be shortlisted. And at that point, then we decided to to make a little um, a, a kind of a preview clip of what we envisioned uh, it, it could be, and then then went went for the interview and and was delighted to to receive the funding, and then went into production, and it was delivered then in 2018. So I mean, I think for frameworks, the the production timeline is roughly about nine to ten months, um, and one of the things that we were really hell-bent on was making sure that we delivered on time um particularly because it was our first one and, and you know we felt uh, as a new studio you know we were really the new kids on the block um we wanted to kind of prove to ourselves um and to the funders and, and to to you know the the audience and, and to the world really that we were able to create something that was visually appealing it was you know a nice story and and you know for ourselves really that that we could do it within within the time frame and we did and so we were delighted about that and then it, it you know just went on to go you know do the festivals around the world uh won a, won a few different awards and yeah we were we were over the moon and really that kind of you know as Cole was saying it it, it was it was really a uh, show real moment um and almost like a proof of concept that we were an animation studio you know and then that led into us developing other ideas and other ips and you know really kind of built up built up um our passion and um gave us the opportunity then to to, to pitch other things to screen ireland and rt and, and other broadcasters around the world um and yeah, just kind of had a, had a, I felt like it had a bit of a snowball effect then. Um, and here we are seven years later with, with two frameworks done and a TV series. And we uh, also received uh, slate funding from Screen Ireland last summer to, to develop other, other projects. So 
yeah, I really think that departure was was kind of the the thing that launched us um, as 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 a company as well as, as just a creative team. So excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. And uh, we we're not going to leave Carl get away. We will go back to the <laughs> clip, uh, but we may now take. Yeah, that was really lovely. And uh, we may as well, let's take, um, give up your all sins now, please, Scott. Thank you. <clears throat> and she, if you went up to see it, hey, and she's really common. And so we finished and the king said, oh, that was gorgeous. I'll give you anything you want. And instead of taking earrings or um, um, a necklace or, or a Watch or a bracelet or something, or a ring or a gold brooch. Excellent. Um, you see, Carl, like it's still good. I mean, like it's still <laughs> uh, a wonderful thing to watch. I remember it well, like when it first came on. I think it came on um, just after the news. It might have replaced the Angelus maybe before it or something. But it was it was it was delivered in Ireland as a very major uh, piece of work, and uh, you should be very proud of it still. Um, okay, we'll we'll move on to Alan next. I think Alan, um, you know, set it up. I mean, it's interesting, you, you were, like as Carl mentioned, you know, with Brown Bag at that time, with Give Up Your Old Sins and The Last Elk. And yeah. by the time then, you did Badly Drawn Boy Roy with uh, Jam. You were kind of beginning to be established at that point, though, weren't you? You were up and running. Um, yeah. But maybe tell us yeah. the scheme at that point for you with Badly Drawn Bo Roy. Um, yeah, yeah, so obviously in brown bag with the lads you know kind of cut our teeth on a few a few short films so uh the last elk was the first one we did and then that was a great learning experience and i think that that's really kind of kind of key to it as well is that the whole learning process of making your own film and and before that i used to kind of you know animate a lot in brown bag but this was a great opportunity to kind of learn that learn the craft you know of storytelling so um did it with uh um uh, the Last Elk, which was a great experience, and then went on then uh, to do obviously Go For Your Sins, which was great to work on, really enjoyed that, you know. And um, then obviously, yeah, we set up Jam in 2002, uh, and um, so we, yeah, we, we had kind of tough times in, in the early days, you know, like like Cahill kind of said, you'd be scrambling around for whatever, you, whatever work you could get, and, you know, it was often times where it would just be the three of us, so it'd be myself, John, and, and uh, Mark sitting in a little office up in, in North King Street, <laughs> and with, with very little to do, you know. And then um, so we we applied for frameworks a, a couple of times, and we got one actually in two thousand and three, which was Escape. It was a film that John made, and it was it was, uh, it was a great uh, again a great great experience for us because it kind of put us on the map as jams. You know what I mean? Um, and then that was in 2003, won a few awards with that, um, which was great. And so again, kind of get, building that kind of, you know, establishing the company in its own right, you know, because uh, it, it is tricky when you're starting out, you know. And then, so I kind of had this idea in my head since college, which was a kind of, you know, uh, a very, like a little kind of nugget or a vignette of, of a, a guy, an animated character, kind of badly drawn stick figure standing on the doll queue in the real world, you know. And I kind of had that in the back of my head for a while. And I said, you must do something with that, you know? So we had a bit of downtime again in uh, two, around 2005. And I, I kind of, I, I got my brother involved and we kind of co-wrote a script about this, you know, badly drawn animated character that kind of faced discrimination on two fronts. Like one, you know, humans kind of discriminated against him because he wasn't human. Um, uh, and then the animation, you couldn't get a job in animation because he was badly drawn. He wasn't cleaned up properly, you know? So that was kind of the idea, fish out of water story. So we we made we got we went applied for the funding, um, and uh, or applied for frameworks, and we were lucky enough to get it, which was brilliant, you know. So we set about making it, and we you know it was it was it's it was such a lot of money at that time, you know, to get it 
get get a big whack of money like that to make a film. So we're like, that's that's great now. But we totally uh, underestimated and, and we're we're over ambitious with our with our vision because mixing live action with animation is just like it's really really expensive, you know. Um, but we were you know ignorance kind of played in our favor that at that stage we said oh, we'll just do it. And then so we we tried to make this film. So we had no money for actors. So we just I just used my family members at the time and we shot it in in Crumlin. So it was set in in Crumlin where I grew up in the in our old house with my my late mom and dad. God bless. And um, they played they played the parents of Roy and my brother played Roy and we we kind of drew over him. So. Um, which was it? Which was a bad mistake because that's why if you're wondering why Roy is so big, <laughs> we had to draw over my brother for every frame, and uh, it, it, it was a really painstaking thing to do, you know, because you have to animate on ones then, you know, because uh, every frame, every movement of the the camera, you'd have to draw another frame. So, so it was quite a painstaking process, but it was really fun, like you know, actually shooting it was our first kind of foray into into live action as well, and we. we we managed to get uh, two friends to help us with that. You know, PJ Dillon, who's a very well-renowned uh, DOP, you know, he, he, he shot it for us. And yeah, it was really, it was hilarious trying to, you know, work with our family and, and seeing them act for the first time and all that, you know. So everybody had a little cameo role, like Mark and John and everyone in, the, in, in, in Jam, and we pulled loads of favours. So people like Darren Hendy did the sound and the music. And so, uh, but we, we, we had a great, great, great crack making it. Um, and uh yeah but and then and then so we we made it and uh we put it into festivals it, it did really well won a few awards and then purely by chance we got a call from bbc the second bbc jess cleverly who kind of said listen you know it, it, we were working with him on another show you know and he said i saw i saw um ali drawing roy at a festival so we'd love to make that show and i said well, well are you sure like it's about a you know 30 year old uh, depressed uh, alcoholic, <laughs> and he said, "No, no, no. We'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll age it down for kids and make it more appropriate." So that the whole the whole uh, fish out of water and the concept, the mock doc concept, was kept, and uh, and it, it did really well. So we, yeah, we went on and made four series of it then, and then two uh, spin off series of a younger version of Roy Little Roy. So yeah, no, it's been been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, that's amazing. I was going to ask you that, like, what was, what happened to bring it from a short to a TV series? So the important takeaway there, like festivals are important to get your films yeah. out there. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. in BBC acquisitions is going to see it. And, uh, and I mean, yeah. it's similar to you, I know, with Fear of Flying and we'll get to it, but we might just watch a quick clip of mm -hmm. um, Roy there, please. Are you happy with your outward appearance or are there some things you'd like to change about yourself? Well, I don't think anybody really likes looking at themselves in the mirror. But I mean, what is the story with this? Like, that's twice the size of that. And I wouldn't say I'm 100% happy with the shape of my head. And then, I suppose, there's my eyes. Like, I'd like them to be the same size. But, I mean, you could go on and on. But I read somewhere that even Brad Pitt hates his feet. True fact, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where you got it. <laughs> we'll come back to you about fear of flying, uh, yeah. Jesse and Leslie. But uh, um, um, Ashley, can you tell us a little bit about where you are now? Because um, what's interesting, you're right up to date now. You're a new um, application to the fund and you're just in production right now. Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. No, and I suppose I, I didn't mention I earlier, oh, sure. I didn't talk enough about and Maps and Plans, um, the studio that I'm making the film with. Um, and I suppose, yeah, and Maps and Plans have made frameworks before. Um, a lot of you might know Coda, which is very successful. And uh, that was Alan Holly's film. Um, and then Rory Burns and Island. Um, so it's not their first frameworks, I suppose. It's just for me, it's my first experience of it. Um, so, you know, with and Maps and Plans, they're kind of a small independent animation studio and they really specialize in hand-drawn animation. Um, but I think in recent years, they've really wanted to expand their talent pool and support and encourage um, emerging talent. So they've, apart from Bardot, they've a few other uh, short films um, in development and they're also developing their own feature film as well. Um, so yeah, it's been an unusual year because of the pandemic. Um, and I know it's challenging and everyone talks about it. So I won't overuse that phrase, but um, 
yeah, like in terms of logistics and making a film from the kitchen table or the box room or the sitting room or the bedroom, which is what the whole crew have been doing. Um, it's kind of remarkable, you know, and it's amazing to see how resilient and strong and how much stamina the Irish animation industry has, you know. Um, and yourself, I mean, like your exhibit, you've got exhibitions coming up, haven't you? And I see this later yeah, this year. Yeah. You're working for Animation Ireland, promoting the work of Ireland. All yeah, the world, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, mm. So yeah, with Animation Ireland, it's like part time and they are really supportive of this, of me wanting to, you know, write and direct. Um, and then, of course, and Maps and Plans with Alan Holly and Carla Vulpiani, they were, you know, mentoring me through the whole process. Um, and yeah, it's just been an amazing experience. And then uh, I suppose we're, we're not finished yet, we still have to deliver. Yeah. What's that? Before you tell us about Bardo, let's just yeah. have a clip to set it up and then yeah. just tell us a bit about it. Because this is, this is a world exclusive, I think. Correct, yes. Nobody has seen yes, and I should say as well, it, it's still very much like it's it's uh, still in production. It's only going into comp next week, so it's still not totally representative of how it'll look. But um, yeah, I think it'll give you an idea, and we can chat about it afterwards. Mm. Start at seven, and you'd be getting out to be going home about your business at nine or half three. You never stopped late, you know. It was once in a blue moonlight. When it happened, we made the most of it. Ah, dramatic. So tell us a little bit. <laughs> yes, tell us about it. Uh, maybe, maybe from the pitch stage or from your the conception of the idea and bringing it yeah. to Screen Ireland and and what is it? What's going on? What's the story? So basically, Bardo is kind of a story about a young woman who finds herself kind of in this constant circle of going out and partying, and she's in her twenties and she's trying to kind of come out of this fog of the twenties. And it's juxtaposed, I suppose, in that clip, we hear her grandmother, who was played by Alwyn Foyer, um, basically regaling life, her past life, her youth of going to dances, which is a little bit more innocent and wholesome. So this is juxtaposed with her granddaughter's version of like drinking shots and, you know, partying. And, and um, so I think she's, yeah, the, the character is like trying to get out of this fog of the 20s and, you know, uh, looking for some kind of, you know, self-realization and embarking on kind of transformation, I suppose, in the end. Um, so, yeah, I suppose everyone relates to it in some level of their 20s, <laughs> their mad 20s. Yes. Um, and, yeah, the, the idea of the grandmother, I recorded my grandmother about 10 years ago actually thinking of Carl there when he was talking about the recordings um, for Give Up Your Old Sins. So about 10 years ago, I recorded my grandmother talking about her growing up on in rural Ireland in the 30s. Um, and I just, the recordings were amazing because I initially went in looking for stories about, you know, farm life, but then it ended up getting very personal and she was talking about her own life, um, you know, her own life as a young woman growing up dating or courting as you would call it um and yeah the recordings are beautiful because you could hear every little bit of you know sound like teacups and the turf fire in the background and so i always wanted to use the recordings for something um and i thought i might use the originals for this but i don't think the quality was good enough but luckily we have Alwyn Fuere who did an amazing job she's just a great voice and a really really brilliant actor so um so yeah that that story was probably came to mind about four years ago and then I went to Alan Holly and Rory Byrne with it and they really liked it and they wanted to you know they were interested in, in doing it frameworks um 
So we said we'd give it a go. And here we are. We're nearly, nearly finished. Can see the end in sight. <laughs> yeah, that's the look of it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just go back to Neve because Neve, obviously, you know, we're showing uh, departure in our yeah. retrospective of the screen, um, the, the screen Ireland works, but we're also showing Dead Hands of Dublin. Um, that's in competition this year. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that project that's very new and yeah. maybe how the framework scheme kind of worked for you there? Yeah, uh, so The Dead Hands of Dublin is our second frameworks film. Um, and basically how it came about was, you know, every other year we, we kind of look at a short that, that we'd be interested in, in doing or, or pitching for and the one after departure was a virtual reality film and then we were like okay well let's let's have a, a look at another frameworks again so at that stage we gave the team that was in the studio at the time the opportunity to pitch their ideas um if they wanted to uh, so we had three people in the studio pitch their ideas and we essentially just voted on, on, on the idea and that was uh, Leo Crowley's um, De The Dead Hands of Dublin. So then I guess, you know, at, at that point, then we, we really kind of went into kind of the creative headspace on, right, how, how will this look and, um, you know, how will we write it and, um, you know, to, to, to get it to the next stage. So that we can pitch to, to hopefully pitch to, to Screen Ireland. Um, and usually when we're doing a project like this, we'll we'll take about a month, a month and a half to kind of get get some get some imagery together and, and get some director's notes and you know really kind of nail down what uh, what what we want for the film so that that. Screen Ireland and RT have a, have a really good vision of, of what we're going for and obviously we you know the, the script um, is written as well and, and uh, the script was written by Leo uh, also um, so yeah we just kind of pulled that all together and I think from the learnings we had uh, from the previous frameworks as well that's that really helped uh, the, the next one and I mean, the, the goal with these kind of things is always to kind of get to the next level, better yourself um, as a studio and as creatives and as storytellers um, and take the, the learnings that you've you've had from the previous one and, and hopefully make something better. So um, I think we would have sent in the script. We would have sent in some some character design concepts. Um, I don't. We, we don't generally send in storyboards at, at that point, um, but we will give an idea of, you know, what, what the, we'll, we'll give, give kind of colored beef boards um, into, into Screen Ireland, um, just, just so that you can really get, get an idea of, of, of the look of it. Um, so we do put a, a, a good amount of work into it before going in with, but also without putting too much work in because, you know, all these things, they, they take time. You have a, a number of people working on it and time is money. So, you know, you can only you can only really put so much into it. But I would say for anyone looking to to put a framework in, just really know, you know, the, the film and what you want to achieve out of it. Um, and particularly if you're if you're new um, to to the industry or you know um kind of a hopefully an up-and-coming um director or, or writer um and and partner partner with with um like exactly what Ashley did partner with with the producer or, or a studio that either has has done it before um just because I I think that helps um I, I think that helps with with the with the application um and yeah, that's that was kind of our process to to getting the second one, and we delivered once again on time, uh, which, as always, <laughs> I'm I'm very uh, proud of. Actually, uh, I think that's the most proud part of the whole thing as a producer that we actually deliver on time. Um, 
I know uh, it, it was an, ama an, an amazing journey and yeah, it's, it's doing the international circuit now, uh, which it's, it's, it's great getting it out there and, you know. It's made it all the way to Dingle, you know. It has, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going far, it's going far. Yeah. But that's a great point. So, you, you know, that, that matching a studio, like a producer with the idea, like I'm going to go back to Carl for uh, Granny O'Grin, Sleeping Beauty, Nikki Gogan. Was, was it Did at that feel? point, like, Nikki Field, sorry. Yeah. It's, uh, at that point, though, Carl, is it like, was it about developing talent within the studio or what was the objective for the studio at that point in making, you know, your second Oscar nominated short? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'm actually more proud of Granny O'Grim than I am of Give Up Your Old Sins because, you know, after Give Up Your Old Sins, it was like, well, what do we do next? And it's like, well, let's let's try and repeat this, you know? Um, you know, because we were a small enough company at the time and we didn't have a, you know, a big masterful business plan or, or anything like that. So we said, no, let's 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 go again with this. Um, and the idea that we could uh, develop internal talent who would identify a project, bring it to us, we would produce it, you know, and it, it kind of became the, you know, the, the guiding light for everything we do in Brown Bag, where our role is to facilitate talent, you know. Um, you know, you, you don't become the talent yourself, you become the talent facilitator. And people that can come in and join the company, like Nikki, after college, directs a short film, goes on, to, you know, directs commercials, and has gone on to direct shows for Disney, and has now created a big international uh, property for a streamer um, that, that's in production. So it, it's, to me, it's always about like, you know, talent and keeping the talent, developing and nurturing the talent. And, uh, you know, Granny O'Grim was a wonderful short film and, uh, you know, really, really beautiful and funny and Irish. And yet it, it resonated very well internationally and at festivals. I think everybody has a nasty uh, experience with their granny given out to them, you know, so. <laughs> Mm. Well, before you go to, we'll, we'll watch a little clip. We have a clip of that, and uh, if you like this one, we'll show it. <clears throat> Soon it was the day of her christening, and everybody in the kingdom had gathered for this joyful occasion, including the lovely, pretty fairies of the forest, who are soon to be beauty's glamorous godmothers. Oh, yes. I mean, she's such an amazing like, character design. I mean, it's just she's incredible um, image. But what was it like then, you know, the second Oscar nomination? Like, was, was, did you win the lottery that time or were you still like cashless? What kind of I, difference did that make? <laughs> I, I think after the first one, you when, when you when you come home and you're you're full of your own self importance, and then your friends start calling you an Oscar loser, it brings you down to earth very very quickly, you know. And um, so I think we were a little bit more prepared the second time around. Um, and indeed, we we had a whole plan. Like after that, we said, well, why don't we try and make this into a series um, as well? Because it was, it's a great springboard when you've got a lot of uh, energy behind the show. But ult ultimately, you know, you can't really have a, an elderly character as a protagonist in a children's TV show. So it was best laid plans. Uh, so we, we, we put that to bed. But um, no, it, it was look, it was great. It was magical. But like, um, I, I think for us, like we, we haven't in recent years, we haven't done as many shorts. And I guess it's largely because we've just become so busy doing TV shows um, and we don't have the resources to commit to doing them properly. Um, and, and, you know, when, you, when you're struggling to do something, and you know, it's almost like, oh, God, how am I going to get this done? It's not worth doing it. You really need to set aside. It has to be such a passion project and a creator-driven project that has given all the resources of everybody and either go, you know, do it really well or don't do it at all. So we, we've kind of pull back a little bit and you know that's no disrespect to the the, the wonderful sh short filmmaking because I think it's an absolutely fantastic springboard for anybody to uh, to aspire to because it, it launches careers it launches studios uh, it you know tells stories it, it gets gets you out internationally and and uh, 
you know, I, I just can't say enough good things about the frameworks um, scheme. You know, really, the, it, the under, you know, the success of the Irish animation industry is arguably underpinned by the investment in the short film schemes, which is which has led to an industry. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that because it's very true. And I know I've been watching shorts now as a programmer since I think about 96. And the talent is amazing. Like oh, just, and you can see it build over the years. I remember the first time I went to Claremont Verond and I saw these enormous queues going in to see shorts. I, I was like, wow, you know, so yeah. there was this incredible culture embedded there, you know, for the short as an art form. And I think we've definitely grown in Ireland, you know, to accept it as an art form within itself. But as you say, it also is, is one of the best launching pads any young aspiring um, animator can have. Um, like Emma, I mean, um, I would just come over to you like at this stage before we run out of time, um, there's just a couple of questions, but what advice Emma would you give um, people listening in relation to the scheme, important elements they should take away from today if they approach you uh, about frameworks? Well, I mean, first of all, thanks to all the speakers there. You're fantastic ambassadors for, for frameworks. And I really appreciate what you're talking about there um, because actually everything you're saying is what we try to do with the scheme. And, you know, it is such a long running scheme and we, we do kind of go, gosh, it's 26 years, you know, should we change it? Should we do something different? Should we stop running it? And as Carl is saying, it's such a busy industry now that, you know, we have seen the amount of applications kind of go down a little. But actually, we've also seen the quality, you know, emerge again and again every year. And we do talk to the industry and ask them, should we change anything? Should we stop doing the scheme? But they're all very keen that we keep doing it, which is which is great. I mean, in terms of of what we like to see is, you know, we like to see it as as, as a kind of um, a stepping stone for, for bigger projects. And so we do get to um, we get our teams in Screen Ireland to work on them as well. I mean, most recently I've had Emer Markey working a lot of them on the scripts because what I would say is the writing is kind of a big part of it. And not everyone who's a brilliant animator, a brilliant visual artist can write a screenplay. And so I would say to people who are applying, particularly maybe if they're writing more narrative based stories um, and, and they come from great places and, and a lot of them come from personal inspiration like Ashton and Al were talking about earlier, but maybe, you know, work with writers on the application get people who are used to screenwriting and um, particularly if you try to tell dramas because you know you could have fantastic visual skills but maybe not the, the best screenwriting skills so you know if you think about your colleagues in, in college maybe somebody was doing a, a screenwriting course alongside your animation course maybe get in touch with them and and start to try and kind of build the application that way um, so that you're kind of looking after all the different levels of it. I mean, Ashley was talking about partnering up with Unmaps and Plans. It's, it's so great to see that kind of collaboration. So you've got a company that's already done a couple of, of really successful films, but you're also bringing in new and emerging talent. And, and we love to see that kind of mix of talent coming in there. You know, Pink Kong, when you first came to us, you were a new, a new company, but you were so together when you came in with the application, you completely gave us confidence because, you know, frameworks aren't always that easy to deliver. I mean, you know, you've all been really kind of great and, and it's been, you've been really on the ball with them, but some people do struggle with them and we appreciate that, you know, and with a view to that, we've actually split the scheme. Uh, last year, we started a new one. So we've got a smaller scheme for two minute films um, so that people who maybe couldn't bite off a five minute film feel that they could do a smaller scheme and it's less pressure on, on, on uh, maybe a smaller outfit. And then the bigger scheme is more designed for working with established companies, established studios who can, as Carl was saying, maybe give them the backup, give them the personnel, give them the kind of even the downtime at the weekends, but there are people, there's a body of people around there who can help uh, deliver the film. Um, so I would say collaborate, collaborate uh, always on the films. That's great, Emma. And like on writing, <clears throat> you know, I mentioned like this year, I think the writing that we received, particularly from the students, was really high. And I give people an example. Will, Will Collins was one of our um, adjudicators. He wrote Wolf Walkers. And uh, he, he contacted me like he was in such, it was so challenging for him to select the final winner. And he just, he taught the standard of writing in the categories he was watching 
was so high. And I just thought that was a really wonderful endorsement to the students that are that are coming um, um, along. Okay, um, we don't have a lot of time. <clears throat> I'm going to ask, this is quite a good question that came in because it will give everybody an opportunity to come up with one word. It says, can I ask the panel in a word, what does it mean for them on a personal level and as an animator to have supporters like Frameworks? So we'll, we'll, we'll begin, but whoever wants to begin, <clears throat> we're on gallery. <laughs> Alan, then, okay, if you must, <laughs> in uh, a word. If I have to, um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> supportive, amazing. Um, it's a, uh, I don't know what I can do with one word. <laughs> um, well, they're, they're, they're two very good words. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're taken. We put those up on the yeah, board. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go next before anyone else takes my word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a huge investment, I think, like, it feels like Screen Ireland and RTE are really investing in your vision and uh, your, like, the studio wanting to grow and expand. Um, and I, yeah, there's just a, a big leap of faith and investment there, which is, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. Mia? Uh, I, I, I guess uh, for me it'd probably be acorns, and I'd say little acorns and big acorns. Like little acorns, you know, you can grow great big trees, but when you become a big studio, it's still a great thing to go back and make a short film as well, just as Pixar do, just as Ardman and all the all the great studios. So it, it, you know, a lot of people think that shorts are a stepping stone to do something else, and they can be, but. Even when you get there, it's great to go back and do shorts. I think it's it's so. I think it's a great investment to do at any stage of your career. Lovely. I'm getting there. Like I'll now, like the the nice structure of a frame and a beautiful image of an acorn within <laughs> it. You know, <laughs> beautiful imagery. Niamh? I'd say passionate, um, because I mean, as as a filmmaker you have to be passionate about your film but the the people supporting you also need to to be passionate about it as well um otherwise you know the 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 film um doesn't doesn't get made and and I must say with Screen Ireland and RT support um you know throughout the whole process obviously there, there's there's check-ins and stuff like that and at any time that they they had notes for us, you know, they they were perfect, they were correct, yeah. and you know, so you can see that that the the funders in, in Screen Art and RT also have a, a passion for for you to make um the, the best film that that you're you're able to make. That's great. And you know, I can echo that too because I know it's probably about two years ago now, Emma, when you know I would have been up in um the office talking about the idea of showing a retrospective of all these animations and Emma and Teresa were in the meeting and, you know, passion was part of it. Like you love these shorts and, you know, many of these shorts were named and I, I'll, I'll let people know now that like, these are all on exhibition on the platform. Um, there's actually 22 uh, framework shorts on show um, in two programs in St. James's church virtually. And of course, um, you know, we've also got the films that were mentioned earlier, except for Ashling's, which is still in production. But hopefully, Ashling, you know, if, if you, you, you'll you submit to us next year. Absolutely, um, yeah, it'd be great. I should just say as well, you know, I think sometimes there's like, well, there's always the focus of the writer and director and producer, but like the crew as well that work on films is just like incredibly talented, especially um, for Bardo anyway, that's my experience, everyone, you know, as the director, you have this overall vision, but like there comes a point when you relinquish a certain amount of control and you let people breathe and express their own, you know, flair and bring their own talents, unique talents to it. And um, I just want to say that as well, just about frameworks. I think it's not just about the writer and director. I think it's, it's a really good opportunity for the whole crew. Um, so that's a shout out to all of the animators on uh, Bardo and our comp artists and background artists as well. So, and without the crew, the film doesn't get made. So yeah, exactly. You know, 
Yeah. yeah. And um, Alan, because I, I didn't come back to you on it, we might as well leave in a really positive note about the students that are on a exhibition now at Animation Dingle, like Fear of Flying. I think it was the Galway Film Fla you guys actually saw it. So, and again, like you mentioned, BBC picking up um, your film about the drawn Roy. Um, just tell us a little bit about you seeing that film and what happened quickly, you know, just to tell yeah. the students or the other filmmakers what can happen. Yeah, um, it, it was a film by a really talented, kind of innovative director, um, uh, Connor Finnegan, and he made it, I think it was back in 2012, and we saw it at the, the premiere in Galway, the Galway Film Flat, and we just thought it was amazing. Like, it's, it's such a beautiful, funny film, and but but we were really taken with the kind of aesthetic of it and the um, the art direction and, and just the, the innovation of production. So he... He basically, he made these needle felt puppets and he used rods with kind of wonky wheels to get a, a, a certain walk and a gait for each character and then remove the rods afterwards. But the, the benefit, I suppose, what was really creative, like he, he, he kind of said to us afterwards that the reason he did that, he wanted to do a stop motion film, but he just, he knew he couldn't, you know, it would be too expensive. So it, it was a really, it was kind of born out of kind of, you know, uh, necessity that he, he, he made this kind of whole new way of creating you know, uh, uh, a film. So we just loved it and loved the whole tactility element of it and um, very, 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 very charming. So we took sections of his film then and we, we kind of developed it with Chris Dicker, uh, co created it in Jam at the time, and uh, we got Connor in and we worked on it with him and, you know, the whole process of kind of developing it and getting it ready to pitch. So we brought it out, cut sections of his film together and put, you know, you know, because it was kind of adult orientated in places and quite dark. So we, we had to kind of just pick, select certain sections of it. And we put it to uh, Alexander Desplat uh, music from uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. And it just kind of, it, it immediately, you could say, oh, that could work for a preschool show, you know? And we brought it out then and we showed it around in the markets and, and got a great response. And uh, we ended up, um, uh, going with Nickelodeon and developing it with them for a year and um, yeah it became a, a 52 11 minute show called Becca's Bunch and it's kind of it's it's on yeah all mm -hmm. around the world now so so it, again it just came from like I, I think it's it, it, it's really key the, the I think you know the aesthetic is a big thing as well obviously storytelling and, and you know characters are the main thing but like it's it's really interesting when you see a new innovative approach you know and and that kind of that can that can be the difference of getting it made and not or not you know because it's just something that people haven't seen before and that there's a there's a certain quality to it that that makes it a uh, yeah stand out so um yeah so, so that, that's kind of what happened with that so in the end 2018 we ended up um releasing it to 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 the world so it was a great story it's a great success story and uh, we'll actually leave with it in a moment but um I'll just let people know because it's a great image to leave with the little 20 second clip because it is such a gorgeous looking film. Mm. And uh, yeah. like you said, the aesthetic is stunning and we'll leave with that clip. But um, I just want to tell people um, that are tuned in that, you know, there's a coffee break next. It's coffee time sponsored by Daryl McQueen, <laughs> one of our fantastic supporters. And following that, stay tuned because uh, we've got Disney's Chippendale panel coming up after that, which will be a whole lot of fun, I'm sure. So my thanks to each of the panelists. You've been brilliant. I think so much for being part of Animation Dingle. I really appreciate your time. Um, you're an incredible, talented bunch of people that are making the world go around in a, in a, in a, in a wonderful, wonderful kind of way, the kind of world I want to live in anyway. And um, thank you. And thank you to everybody that's listening. And we'll just play out now with a little clip of Fear of Flying. Thanks, Mars. Thank you. Now, where to put you? Perfect. <laughs> 